Sutra, on the third day of the eighth month of the year Kui Shou, the second year of the Tian Tian reign, A. A. Seven Hundred Thirteen, after a meal in Kuo An Temple, the master said, "Each of you take your seat, for I am going to say goodbye." Fa Hai said. What teaching Dharma will the High Master leave behind so that confused people can be led to see the Buddha nature? The Master said, "All of you, please listen carefully. If those of future generations recognize living beings, they will have perceived the Buddha nature. If they do not recognize living beings, they may seek the Buddha th- throughout many eons, but he will be difficult to meet." I will now teach you how to recognize the living beings within your mind, and how to see the Buddha nature there. If you wish to see the Buddha, simply recognize living beings, for it is living beings who are confused about the Buddha, and not the Buddha who is confused about living beings. When enlightened to the self nature, the living being is a Buddha. If confused about the self nature, the Buddha is the living being. When the self nature is impartial, the living being is the Buddha. When the self nature is biased, the Buddha is the living being. If you, your thoughts are devious and malicious, the Buddha dwells within the living being. But by means of one impartial thought, the living being becomes a Buddha. Our minds have their own Buddha, and that Buddha is the true Buddha. If the mind does not have its own Buddha, where can the true Buddha be sought? Your own minds are the Buddha. Have no further th- doubts. Nothing can be established outside the mind, for the original mind produces the ten thousand dramas. Therefore, the sutras say the mind produced. All dramas are produced. The mind is extinguished. All dramas are extinguished. Commentary: The great master instructed his disciples to take their seats. In Buddhism, everything has a fixed order. Those who take precepts first stand or sit in front of those who take them later. If you have held precepts for even one day longer, you sit in front. Once again, Far High Number One heard that the sixth patriarch was going, and so he acted as spokesman. He was the oldest, so naturally he was higher than everyone else. What dharma will you leave with us? High master, so that we can teach the deluded ones of future generations to understand the minds, the mind, and see the nature. The master said, "If you want to find the Buddha, you must look among living beings. If you recognize living beings, you recognize the Buddha nature. Why does never slighting Bubu Bodhisattva bow before everyone he meets? Because he knows that everyone is a Buddha." He will accomplish Buddhahood himself. If he saw everyone as a demon, he would become a demon. See the Buddha within your own mind. Don't seek him outside. If you wish to see the Buddha, you must first respect living beings and recognize them all as the Buddha. Then you've understood the mind and seen your nature. Confused living beings do not recognize the Buddha, but the Buddha recognizes living beings. If you are biased and continually pick at other people's faults, even if you are a Buddha, you turn into a living being. Living beings and the Buddha are a sort of part. Buddha is mind. Mind is Buddha. Right thoughts are the Buddha. Devil thoughts are the demon. Pure thoughts are the Buddha. Divine thoughts are the demon. Take a look at your thoughts. If you can keep your mind clean. That is the real Buddha. With a clear, pure, genuine Buddha mind, where can you go to find the Buddha? You never find him. The Buddha is made in your mind. Do not seek him outside. Nothing is separate from the self nature. Nothing is separate from your own mind. The ten thousand dramas are all produced from your mind, not from outside. The Buddha spoke all dramas for the minds of living beings. If there were no minds. What else would Dharma be? Sutra. Now to say goodbye, I will leave you a verse called the Self Nature's True Buddha Verse. People of the future who understand its meaning will see their original mind and realize the Buddha way. 
The verse runs, The true such is self-nature is the true Buddha. Devon views the three poisons are the demon king. Commentary, the most important part of the Platform Sutra is this last verse. It explains everything extremely well. The sixth patriarch left it not just for the people of his day, but for us. Now, to cultivate according to its principles, he saw that you and I would be here listening. We, are, have, we all have a share, and we should cultivate according to this verse because we are all people of future generations, not animals. The animals of future generations will have to be reborn as people before they can have a share. The sixth patriarch spoke this verse for people, not animals. Animals who wish to become Buddhas must first be reborn as human beings. We should not lose this opportunity. The true such is self-nature is the true Buddha. The self-nature is your mind. Your true such is self-nature is also called the real mark, the Tathagata store, the Buddha nature, and your nature. True such is just your nature, which is the true Buddha. Devin views the three poisons are the demon king. If you know the true Buddha, you should also know the demon king. The demon king is just your devil views. Greed, hate, and delusion, the three poisons. Greed for riches, greed for sex, greed for anything at all is nothing but poison. If after you leave home you are still greedy and self-seeking, that too is poison. If you scheme to get more disciples, that is poison. So you see, we have been here for a long time and not many have taken refuge and become disciples. Those who take refuge must do it on their own. No one advises them. If I told you to take refuge with me, you might wonder if I had the right to be your teacher and good knowing advisor. I don't know myself whether I am a good knowing advisor, and so I do not go about it in this way. Sutra at times of demon confusion, the demon king is in the house, but when you have proper views, the Buddha is in the home. Devon views the three poisons produced within the nature, are just the demon king, come to dwell in the house. Proper views casting out three poisons of the mind, transform the demon into Buddha, true, not false. Commentary, Devon confusion is ignorance. Ignorance creates love and desire, and that is the demon king dwelling in your house. If you have proper views and not the wrong ones of greed, hate, and delusion, then your mind is pure and the Buddha is in the hall. The Buddha and the demon are both manifested from your nature. When you hold Devon views, the three poisons arise and the demon comes to dwell in your house. What is your house? Your body. Proper views spontaneously spell the three poisons, and the demon immediately changes into Buddha. This principle is absolutely true. It cannot possibly be false. You need only hold proper views, and that is the Buddha. Improper views are the demon. Sutra, Dharma body, reward body, and transformation body. Fundamentally, the three bodies are all one body. Seeing that for yourself within your nature is the body cause for realizing Buddhahood. The pure nature is originally produced from the transformation body. The pure nature is ever present within the transformation body. Once nature leads the transformation body down the right road, and in the future, the full perfection is truly without end. Commentary, also spoken of as three, the clear, pure Dharma body, the perfect, full reward body, and the hundred thousand miras of transformation bodies are fundamentally one. The three bodies are simply transformations of your one body. This is called three in one, one in three. Draw seeing for yourself, the true Buddha within your self-nature is a cause for your future realization of Buddhahood. It is a seed of Buddhahood. Having planted the Bodhi seed, you will certainly reap the Bodhi fruit and become a Buddha. The clear, pure self-nature originally arises from the transformation body. Your pure self-nature, your pure Dharma body, 
is within your transformation body. In the future, your body self nature will be perfected and the perfect full reward body will be truly inexhaustible. Sutra, the root cause of purity, is the lost nature. For once rid of lust, the substance of the nature is pure. Each of you within your nature abandon the five desires in an instant. See your nature, it is true. Commentary, everyone has a sexual desire. But you do not need to be afraid of it. In the Suragama Sutra, we read about Ushusma, the five head vira, whose sexual desire was unbearably intense when he first began to cultivate, but he was able to discipline and temper the fire of lust, transforming it into the fire of wisdom and transforming himself into the five head vira. The root cause of purity is the lost nature. Proper thoughts are the cause of purity in the nature, and Devon thoughts the cause of impurity. Therefore, cut off the nature of sexual desire, which means transform it. This certainly is not telling you to castrate yourself. That's not the answer. Just change the, your thoughts and make them pure in nature. You don't have to cut off sexual desire. Don't cut it off, transform it instead. Transform lust into purity, which is simply proper knowledge and proper views. The lust within the nature is simply devon knowledge and devon views. Once rid of lust, the substance of nature is pure. To get rid of lust means to transform it. You don't have to throw it away, all you have to do is transform it. You don't have to throw it away, all you have to do is change your thoughts and direct them to the pure nature. That is the clear, pure substance of the self-nature, the Dharma body. The five desires are for wealth, sex, fame, food, and sleep. They may also be slain as forms, sounds, smells, tastes, tangible objects, and objects of the mind. In general, stay far away from them. Do not have devon thoughts within your self-nature. Cultivate proper knowledge and proper views and abandon the five desires. Once you leave the five desires, you can see the nature in an instant and obtain your own true such in this wonderful nature. Sutra, if in this life you encounter the door of the sudden teaching, you will be suddenly enlightened to your self-nature and see the honor of the world. If you wish to cultivate and aspire to Buddhahood, you won't know where the truth is to be sought unless you can see the truth within your own mind. This truth, which is the cause of realizing Buddhahood, not to see your self-nature, but to seek the Buddha outside. If you think that way, you are deluded indeed. I now leave behind the Dharma door of the sudden teaching to liberate worldly people who must cultivate themselves. I announce to you and to future students of the way, if you do not hold these views, you will only waste your time. Commentary. Having encountered the sudden teaching of the Dhyana school, you may become instantly enlightened and understand your original mind and see your original nature. At that moment, you will personally meet the world-honored ones, the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. You can see them all, unless you apply your thought in the self-nature instead of looking outside. You will never find the genuine Buddha. Understand your mind and see your nature. That is the way to realize Buddhahood. If you do not turn the light around and seek within yourself, but run outside instead to look for the Buddha, you are being stupid, stupid, extremely stupid. You must cultivate the drama of sudden enlightenment on your own. Do not fail to cultivate. If you do not hold the notions expressed in this verse, you are wasting your time. You will never obtain the smallest advantage. Sutra, having spoken the verse, the master continued. All of you should take care. After my extinction, do not act with worldly emotion. If you weep in sorrow, receive condolences, or wear mourning clothes, you are not my disciples, for that is contrary, contrary to the proper drama. 
Simply recognize your own original mind and see your own original nature, which is neither moving nor still, neither produced nor extinguished, neither coming nor going, neither right nor wrong, neither dwelling nor departing. Commentary The Master said, unlike common, vulgar, worldly folk, do not make an emotional display of your feelings. Don't behave like that. Don't weep tears like rain to irrigate the fields. My disciples have to obey me. If you do such things, not only are you not my disciples, but you are also contradicting the Buddha Dharma. Do not strike up false thinking. Don't fail to put it down. Don't fail to break through it. You must see through it, smash it, and put it all down. Then you can be free. If you are not supposed to mourn, then what should we do? The disciples wondered. Recognize your original mind. What is it like? It doesn't move and it isn't still. It doesn't come or go. It's not right or wrong, good or bad, black or white, long or short. It doesn't stay and it doesn't leave. It's neither here nor there. Work to see the self-nature, understand your mind, then you will not have wasted your time. Sutra, because I'm afraid that your confused minds will misunderstand my intention, I will instruct you again so that you may see your nature. After my extinction, continue to cultivate accordingly as if I was still present. Should you disregard my teaching, then even if I were to remain in the world, you would obtain no benefit. He further spoke this verse, firm, firm. Do not cultivate the good, high, high. Do not do evil. Still, still, cut off sight and sound. Vast, vast, the mind and the text. Commentary. Firm, firm means not moving. Thus, thus unmoving. Clear, clear and constantly bright. Do not cultivate the good. Does not mean that you should not cultivate good. It just means that you should not be attached when you cultivate the good. Don't be like that greedy-minded ghost Emperor Wu Liang who thought, "Look at all my merit." Hi, hi means happy and cheerful, independent and content from morning to night. Do not do evil does not mean that you can think, "I am not attached to doing evil, so it's no problem." Attached or not, not attached, you should not do evil. What is evil? Killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct. Of the ten thousand evils, licentiousness is the worst. Do not walk down this road of death. Do not walk this road. Do not do evil. Still, still, cut off sight and sound. This state is peaceful, comfortable, and happy. Still, still, quiet, quiet. You cut off sight and sound by not producing devil thoughts at the gates of the six sense organs. It is all right to have proper thoughts, but cut off the devil ones. Cut off devil sides and sounds. For example, if people are speaking improperly, don't listen. Vast, vast, the mind and the text. This mind's capacity extends throughout the universe and fields of heaven and earth. It is high, great, broad, vast, limitless, and unbounded, and it is not attached anywhere. Sutra. After speaking this verse, the master sat upright until the third watch, when suddenly he said to his disciples, "I'm going." In an instant, he changed, and a rare fragrance filled the room. A white rainbow linked with the earth. And the trees in the wood turned white. The birds and the beasts cried out in sorrow. Commentary: The master sat meditating with his disciples until the middle of the night, at twelve o'clock. Then he said, "The time has come to go. See you all again." His energy was cut off, and he no longer moved. He had entered nirvana. He changed means that he moved to a new house. Who moved? The flesh body bodhisattva, the forest turned white because the white rainbow light shone on it. You could also say that the trees knew the master was dead, and so they expressed their grief by wearing the white clothes of mourning. All the animals on the mountain cried uncontrollably. 
Grass and trees seem to be without feelings, but they put on mourning clothes. Birds and beasts ordinarily don't understand very much, but they showed forth a spiritual nature and wept. Sutra. In the eleventh month, a dispute arose among the officials, disciples Sangha and Laity of the three countries of Guangzhou, Shaozhou, and Xinzhou as to who should receive the true body. As they could not agree, they lit in sense and prayed, saying, The master will be returned to the place indicated by the incense smoke. The smoke went directly to Cao Tzu, and so, on the thirteenth day of the eleventh month, the reliquary and the transmitted rope and bow were returned there. In the following year, on the twenty-fifth day of the seventh month, the body was removed from the real inquiry, and disciple Feng Pian anointed it with the incense paste. Remembering the prophecy that his head would be taken, the disciples wrapped sheets of iron and lacquered cloth around his neck for protection and then placed his body in the pagoda. Just then, a white light appeared within the pagoda, shot up in the sky, and did not fade for three days. The magistrate of Shaozhou reported this to the emperor and received an imperial order to erect a stone table tablet, commemorating the master's conduct in the way. The master's springs and autumns were 76. The rope was transmitted to him when he was 24, and when he was 39, his hair was cut. For the 37 years, he spoke drama to benefit living beings. 43 men inherited his drama, and an uncountable number awoke to the way and overstepped a common lot. The rope of belief transmitted from body drama, the Mona rope and precious bone conferred by Imperial Chun Tsung as well as the lifelike image sculpted by Fang Pian and other articles of the way were entrusted to the attendant in charge of the stupa and were permanently retained at the Paolin Bodhi Mandala for the Bodhi Mandala's protection. The platform sutra has been transmitted to set forth the principles of our school to glorify the triple jewel and to benefit all living beings. Commentary. Those from Guangzhou wanted to take the body to Fa Xing Temple. The sixth patriarch had his head shaved here. He should return here now to receive offerings. The Xinzhou people all said, The great master is a native of Xinzhou. He should return there. And those of Shaozhou insisted that since the patriarch had expounded his teaching there, he should not be returned to that place. While the patriarch was alive, they had never quarreled over him, for he had been most independent. But now the master had completed the stillness, and everyone felt as if they personally had the right to remove his body and make offerings to it. Wasn't the Sikh patriarch originally from Sintro, and didn't the master himself say, Falling leaves return to the root? But the Sikh patriarch himself built Nanhua Temple, said those of Shaozhou. He really should return there. The patriarch left home in Guangzhou. He let his hair fall there and his dharma should all fall back to us. The text says that they could not agree, and that indicates that the situation was extremely grave. It was a crisis. Everyone was trying to take the body away by force. They argued and argued until one intelligent person said, Stop! While he was alive, we obeyed the master's instructions. Now that he has died, we should still listen to him. Let's ask the master to decide. But he's already dead, they said. How can he tell us where he wants to go? The master has great spiritual powers, he said, and he knows all of our thoughts. It must displease him to see us here fighting over the right to make offerings to his body. Let's light some incense and in whatever direction the smoke drips, that is where the master wants to go, then no one can argue about it. The smoke went straight to Nanhua Temple, and there was nothing that the people from Guangzhou and Xinzhou could say. 
The lectures are now complete and the sutra has been explained. You have undergone much suffering and I don't know whether you realized it was suffering or not. If you felt it was suffering, you're just a common person. But if you did not feel that it was suffering, then you're just a rock or a piece of wood. Well, was it suffering? As to my explanation, I don't know whether I explained well or badly. And I also don't know if you listened well or badly. Good and bad, get rid of them both. Explaining is just explaining and listening is just listening. We have met because of a karmic affinity. We have heard the story of the Sikh Patriarch's life and of his cultivation of the way. You should not look for good or bad points, but look instead to see whether you believe advance down the right road and retreat from the wrong. You should cultivate according to the Dharma. Memorize the last verse of this sutra and recite it often. For if you reflect on its meaning, you will certainly realize Buddhahood. And don't discriminate as to whether I explained the sutra well or not. Just look to see whether or not you cultivate. If you cultivate, what is bad is good. But if you do not cultivate, what is good is bad. Now I'm going to ask you a question. The sixth patriarch was an illiterate, and the illiterates cannot have much knowledge. How could someone who couldn't even read speak a sutra? What does this mean? Student, I think the sutra shows that you don't need a lot of scholarly learning in order to become enlightened. The sudden teaching is just the mind, realizing the mind, and we should do it. Who else has a view? This is a democracy. Speak up. Student, in the sixth Vajra's drama explanation, where could a word arise? Student, the principles contained the sutra, containing the sutra are so clear and out in front that every time I try to say something about them, I get tied up in dualism and feel hopelessly overwhelmed. Does anyone else have an opinion? Student, master, when the Sikh Vajrak was about to enter Nirvana, he said, see you later. Where is he now? He comes right from where you're speaking. Now, why was it that the master never learned to read? During the time that the Sikh Vajrak schools were not available to own and to attend, you had to have money. The Sikh Patriarch's family was extremely poor because his father was an honest official who never took bribes. As a boy, even getting food to eat was a problem for the master. So, of course, he couldn't go to school. It was a question of environment then. He never learned to read because his family was poor and because schools were not available. But there is yet another reason. Why did the Sikh Patriarch choose to appear in a poor family? He did it to show us that even illiterates can realize Buddhahood and become Patriarchs. Thus, he raised the hopes of those who could not read. Seeing the Sikh Patriarch, everyone thought he never went to school, but he cultivated and obtained the fruit of the way. We can do it too. It is not the case that if you can't read, you can't cultivate. If you think only educated people can cultivate, you're holding a prejudice. The sixth patriarch appeared to cause us all to lay down such prejudices. As I see it, these are three reasons why the sixth patriarch never learned to read. There's one more thing you should recognize clearly about the sixth patriarch. He was not lazy. He always practiced Buddha Dharma. He became enlightened and after his enlightenment, he spoke the Platform Sutra. Being able to read is just worldly knowledge. The Sikh Patriarch understood his mind, saw his nature, and opened up to his inherent wisdom. Because this Sutra was spoken from the bright light of his wisdom, its value is incomparable. It is the same as Sutra spoken by the Buddha, so do not take him lightly just because he couldn't read. The sutra is now complete, and after teaching it, I make that statement to all of you.